The owner of this two-year-old Les Paul Historic got a ding in the peg head and made the mistake of trying to sand it out and fix it himself, and he dug himself a hole. Then I had to dig him back out, and I did. It's looking almost perfect, but I'll tell you, when it came in, it looked like this. And you can see that divot right down to the bare wood, which is uh, the holly that the peg head's overlaid with. So what I did was feather sand out the lacquer to break that hard edge of the pit. And then I sprayed black lacquer that I mixed with clear lacquer, black color tone stain, and black color tone lacquer pigment in an airbrush. And I used this piece of paper to dodge it. That way you spray through the hole and you only hit the area that you want. And I wanted to stay away from the Les Paul decal because it's right on the surface and it's very weak to begin with. If you're doing a big fill like this and you want to get a lot of lacquer to fill quickly, take a pipette and pull some unthinned lacquer out of the jar and drip it onto a piece of Teflon. This is Teflon Fret Dam. Let it harden and you'll get a piece of film that's pure lacquer but quite thick and you can spray a little thinner on the spot and lay this into it and it will melt down in. I'd spray and sand, spray and sand, always trying to not sand away the Les Paul decal. When I'd sprayed all the clear that I needed, I sanded that final coat out with uh, 1200 dry, and then I sprayed a flash coat to melt it all out. That's what I learned at Gibson back in the 60s. A flash coat is four parts thinner to one part lacquer and a little lacquer retarder thrown in, especially if the weather's humid. You need to give it extra time to dry then. This final coat has dried over a week. That's plenty of time. A week to 10 days is what I give it. I'm going to sand it out with 1500 paper before I buff it. And when I sand at this stage, I don't like to wrap my sandpaper around the block like it's often done. I don't like that round edge. It can pick up its own grit and make scratches. What I like is to use double stick tape and tape the paper to the sanding block, leaving the edge just slightly upturned like a ski so I'm sanding flat. That's good enough. And I'm starting with a flat, small pad and a coarse compound. Make sure to mark your foam pads so you know what compound was used on it in case you can't tell later. I went from the brown coarse to medium on that cone wheel. And I think that did it. Then I'm just cleaning up with uh, some swirl remover on a piece of lint-free cloth. You can use the swirl remover on a foam pad too if you want to. This has looked good enough. I don't want to waste another pad right now. That's a little preservation polish. And I'm real happy with this. And I didn't have to go to a big buffer. I did it all right here with a hand drill. He's going to love it.